Here we will study the image formation by a convex lens like the one shown here. Uh, this is its optical axis which is nothing but the axis of symmetry passing through its center. Now every lens has a focal length which defines the position of these points marked as F. These are called the foci. Uh, they are at a distance of focal distance from the center. We have also marked these points two F's at twice the distance from the center. Suppose we have been given an object which is resting on the axis like this. Then the image can be found by using rays coming from this object and striking the lens. So here is our first uh, ray. It is parallel to the axis and a convex lens makes such rays pass through the focus on the other side. So it gets bent and passes through the focus on the other side. Uh, let's send the second ray towards the center and a convex lens allows all such rays to continue unaffected. So it will not deflect but just continue in a straight line like that. So these two rays are intersecting at this point. Finally, let us take a third ray through the focus this time like this and this is a kind of reversal of the first case. If a parallel lay ray passes through the focus then a ray through the focus will emerge parallel to the axis like this. And now something very special is happening. If we see two lines intersecting it's not surprising it's in fact inevitable unless they are parallel. But three lines meeting in a point is indeed something special. And this is a special point because our image is going to get formed here where all these rays come together. Once we have an image, we observe four of its important properties. Number one, its location, whether it is on the same side of the lens as the object or the opposite side. Then its orientation, whether it is directed the same way as the object called erect or opposite to the object upside down called inverted. Then its size, if it is smaller than object, it's called diminished image, larger than object, it's called magnified image. And finally, its nature, whether it can be taken on screen or gotten hold of through other optical instruments like lenses and mirrors or it can be just observed then it's called as virtual image. Over here the image that we are getting is on the opposite side of the lens as compared to the object. It is inverted upside down as compared to the object. It is of the same size. This is a very special case and its nature is real. As we change the position of the object, all these four optical properties would change. So we can see that in a parametric model. So here is our ray diagram. We can push this object beyond 2f and you will see the image would become smaller. Well, if you pull it in between f and 2f, it will become larger. But the nature remains same. It's on the opposite side. It's inverted. It's real. And uh, something interesting happens as we start pushing this towards the lens. You would see the image is becoming bigger and bigger and these two rays, the angle between them is reducing. That trend would continue as we come towards this point F and the two rays are nearly parallel. So you can imagine the uh, image must be very far away. In fact, when we reach F, it is at infinity. And then there is a sudden switch over from one side to the other. The image then comes on the same side as the object. It remains magnified, but it becomes upright. It also becomes virtual, so you can't get hold of it. But then the lens can be used as a magnifying glass. So let us mark these zones here, the three zones. One between the center to the focus, from focus to twice the focal distance, and then beyond. In the first zone, the image is on the same side, it is erect, it is magnified and it's virtual. We are using it as a magnifying glass. In the second zone between F and 2F, the image is on the opposite side. It is real and inverted, but it is still magnified. And beyond 2F, it is a real and inverted image on the opposite side, but it is a diminished image. 